My wife's friend is a single mother. Let's call her Li. She's Chinese, but has been living in Australia for the last 10 years or so. She's not a single mum by choice. Of course not. I doubt anybody would be so foolish. When she first fell pregnant about four years ago, her boyfriend refused to marry her. Now, I don't necessarily think that people have to marry, but in the Chinese community, if your boyfriend refuses to marry you when you are pregnant, then he probably has no intention of staying with you. And that's exactly what happened. Lee's parents were unsurprisingly pissed off. They told her that he was a bad man and that he either needs to marry her or get out of her life. He chose the latter. He left without hesitation. Now, I've met this man. He came over to my house when she was pregnant. I knew from the get-go that he wasn't that interested in her. Most of the time he was outside sitting in the car. A little bit strange, I thought. So anyway, her mother came out from China to help her while she was pregnant. She had the baby, but the man never came round until the baby was a good couple of months old. Lee had always told my wife that her hope was for the man to come and see his new daughter and then suddenly have a change of heart. He would suddenly say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm coming back. In the end, she was half right. The man wanted to be more involved in his daughter's life, and he started coming around a couple of times a week. Lee started to think that he probably will eventually marry her, and that they'll someday become a happy family. About a year went past, and they still weren't married. I was joking with my wife, wouldn't it be funny if she fell pregnant again? I know, dark humour, right? But you wouldn't believe what happened. A month later, Lee was pregnant again with her second child. I couldn't believe it. I told my wife that if it didn't work out the first time, what chance will it this time? She then told me that Lee's plan was always to fall pregnant again, basically in a desperate attempt to convince the man to marry her. After all, no man would leave a single mum to look after two small children by herself, would they? Boy, was she wrong. As soon as the man found out she was pregnant again, he fled. Of course, I thought. I mean, he's already proven that he's not willing to look after a pregnant lady. Obviously, he's incredibly scared of commitment. As expected, Lee was completely distraught. Her mother returned to Australia and helped her through the second pregnancy and the tough times that ensued. Fast forward to today and she's doing okay. Her youngest is now almost two and her mother has basically moved in permanently to help out. Believe it or not, Lee has a mortgage to pay off. I guess it was initially in both her and her boyfriend's name, but now I'm sure it's all on her. Luckily, she has a stable, albeit casual, job. She also receives some welfare as far as I know, but she certainly needs her casual job to have enough to pay off the mortgage and other bills. The father of her children contributes very little, I think something like $50 a month, and even then, he sometimes misses a month. He claims he can't find a job, but she knows that to be untrue. It's just that he usually works for cash in hand and isn't honest about how much he makes. Anyway, I think we all know that he's a bit of a low life and that he probably will never man up and come back to look after his two kids. However, today's story is actually not about Lee. Well, sort of. It's actually about her neighbour. About three months ago, another single mother moved into Lee's street. She's renting the small house next door. She has five children, she drinks, smokes, has different men visiting the house every second week, and basically is an all-round mother of the year. She clearly lives off welfare and has little concern about the welfare of her children. The fact that she spends a lot of her money on tobacco and booze probably suggests that the kids are not getting the optimal upbringing. A few weeks ago, Lee woke to the sounds of scratching on her front door. She looked outside and saw three of the kids, probably all younger than ten, scribbling on her front door. She opened the door as they ran away and saw that they had defaced her front wall and door. Crayons, markers, you name it, they had done a good job. Lee told my wife about this, but she was too scared to approach the lady next door. She had witnessed the lady shouting and screaming at her children and boyfriends, and didn't want to experience that herself. Luckily for Lee, her other neighbour had also fallen victim to the same graffiti on the front wall and door. She came over to Lee's house and told her about it and suggested that they approach the single mum and at least hold her accountable. That was the plan, anyway. The next day they went over and knocked on the lady's front door. Lee, being a fairly timid type, stood behind the other neighbour and decided not to say anything. From what I understand, the conversation went something like this. Uh, excuse me, your children have been scribbling all over our front doors. So? Well, maybe you should make them come over and clean it off? Why would I do that? Well, they've done the wrong thing, maybe you should teach them a lesson. 
Look, lady, what do you want? I didn't scribble on your damn wall. But you're their mother. Surely you should punish them for what they've done wrong. I'm not going to be told by you or anybody else how to be a mother. Now piss off. If you don't do something about this, we're going to call the police. Call the fucking police then. Door slams. To be expected, the single mother next door couldn't give two hoots about her children's transgressions. And although she's not a very good mother, she probably knows full well what the police would do. Not very much. I'd imagine she's dealt with them before. Even if the police did come around, what would they do? I'd guess the conversation would go one of two ways. Excuse me, we've had reports that your children have been drawing on the neighbours' front doors. What do you have to say about that? That's simply not true, officer. I don't know why they would say that. My children are lovely little angels. They would never do that. Look, come see for yourself. They're playing with their toys out the backyard. Okay, well, make sure you keep an eye on them, all right? No worries, officer. Police leave. Or, excuse me, we've had reports that your children have been drawing on the neighbours' front doors. What do you have to say about that? I'm so sorry, officer. I was on the phone with Centrelink and the kids must have snuck out. I'm so sorry. I'm sure they won't do it again. Okay, well, make sure you keep an eye on them, all right? No worries, officer. Police leave. I doubt it would ever go further than that, and I think the single mum knows this. As long as she plays the victim, or the poor unfortunate single mum, then the police will leave her be. The only chance that anything will happen is if Child Safety Services gets involved. According to their website, an investigation would have to take place as follows. The investigation and assessment may be our first face-to-face -face contact with a child who has been abused or neglected and who may need our intervention to ensure their safety and well-being. As part of the investigation and assessment, the department will determine if the child is safe, investigate allegations of significant harm and significant risk of harm, undertake a holistic assessment of the child and family within their usual home environment, determine if the child is in need of protection, decide whether there are supports that the department or other agencies can provide to the child and family. My guess is that unless the children are being physically abused in some way, child safety would probably not have the power to do anything, and so the single mum next door continues to be a thorn in her neighbour's side. And here's the overarching dilemma. Single mums in Australia do have access to welfare. Some argue that this encourages irresponsible behaviour. However, if there was no welfare, then these poor children would either starve or live a life of crime. So I think ultimately, some form of welfare is better for society than no welfare at all. According to the Department of Human Services website, to get a parenting payment, the primary carer must have a child under the age of 8 if they're single, or under the age of 6 if they have a partner. Currently, you can receive $762.40 per fortnight if you're single, or $492.80 if you have a partner, so you get more money if you're a single mum. I suppose this assumes that the partner would either be working or also receiving some sort of government payment. On top of all this, you can receive a family tax benefit, Part A. The maximum rate per child each fortnight is $182.84 for a child 0 to 12 years of age. It increases as the child gets older. There's also another payment called Family Tax Benefit Part B. The maximum rate per family each fortnight is $155.54 when the youngest child is 0 to 5 years of age. This decreases as the youngest child becomes older. All in all, some might argue that these payment tiers encourage single mums to continue having babies. The fact that you get more money for each child that you have, and that some of the payments are decided based on the age of your youngest child. However, we have to admit that there are some real reasons for a mother not having a husband around. For example, she's a widow. Or, her partner did something terrible and went to jail. I mean, all of these situations are outside her control. So obviously, a caring society like Australia needs to look after those that are most at risk, especially where children are concerned. But we see that there's a growing tendency for single mums in Australia to keep having more children in order to get more payments. I know of a couple of families myself that are somewhat abusing the system. Maybe this is what the government wants. Maybe they want to increase the fertility rate in order to improve the economy. I think that's a fairly common mantra among economists and politicians. A high fertility rate equates to a growing economy, and low fertility rates have the opposite effect. 
It makes sense. If there is less population in the future, and less younger people to support an aging population, then ultimately it's going to hurt the economy and society as a whole. But then again, overpopulation is also a real issue. But that's a discussion for another day. Either way, single parenthood is not an ideal situation. My wife's friend Lee shows us that single mums can still work and raise two children, with some help from her mother and the government of course. Her single mother neighbour shows us that it's also possible to live fully off government benefits. Whether this is good for society or not is yet to be seen. There is certainly a fine line between helping the most vulnerable members of our society, for example the five children of the single mother next door, and providing too much support which results in encouraging irresponsible behaviour. If it's too easy for mothers to go it alone without the support of a husband, then more and more mothers will go that way. I don't know the answer, but I think cutting off payments to single parents would be a bad move unless there was some other support structure that could take its place. What do you think? Are single mums with five children rorting the system? Are we just encouraging bad behaviour? Or are they just the minority? Are most single parents just doing the best they can with the cards they've been dealt? Either way, we can't have children being raised thinking it's okay to scribble on the neighbour's front wall and getting away with it. Scribbling will turn into drug taking. Drug taking will turn into stealing and violence. That can't be good for society.